Hi, I'm Kathy Terrian from Tempe, Arizona, vacationing in Southern California, and I'm really happy to be here at Aline's Creative Living and learn a little bit more about crafting. So let's get started. Welcome to Aline's Creative Living. We have a variety of projects planned today to entice you to get busy and craft. I'm enticed. <laughs> Bonnie is here with the cutest crush can. Buddies, look at these. Aren't they adorable? And I want to tell you a little bit about this because the first crush can I ever saw was actually Heidi's idea. I believe that she had the first crushed can uh, buddies uh, idea that anybody had. I never had heard about them before, but aren't those adorable? Ma uh, Marlene always does a real, real nice job of any craft that she does. Yes, she does. Those are adorable. Look at that. The mouth comes, you know, it's the opening of the... Oh, she's going to show you how to do this, or Bonnie, I guess, is going to show you how mm -hmm. to do this. And Sue Thornton Gray has a new technique for adding ribbon accents on jeans. It's a trend we're still seeing everywhere. We also have a jolly Uncle Sam made with fabric and batting that you can use for the 4th of July. And decorative additions for candles and glass bottles. And I'm going to leave you. I'll be seeing you. Have a fun time. We'll also showcase some fun and funky gift wrapping ideas. And Joan Fee is dropping by with some wire plant stakes that are just about as beautiful as the flowers they hold up. Our first project today is a must if you're doing any outdoor entertaining. Cheryl Ball is here with an idea to keep those bugs at bay. Cheryl, it's that time of the year, isn't it? The bugs are coming out and you're <laughs> going to want to eat outside in your backyard and with this cool little food cover, you won't have any problems with bugs. Isn't that cute? Just Isn't it darling? Decorating. Let's take a closer look at it because you buy these and they're not very attractive. Right. And then see how you can put covers over right. your food like that? And you know what? I bought this in the camping section, in case anybody's wondering, of my to department find. store. So that's where you find them is in the camping section. Okay. Isn't and that cute? And you have really dolled it up. So let's show how. Uh, yes. Well, we're using the fusible web today. And I just picked out some colored fabric that I liked, and I ironed it to the back. Uh, first of all, let's take a look at what, what it looked like when you purchased it. Yeah. The cover. Boring white, mm -hmm. right here. Okay, and is that fabric that's on it? it yeah, it's kind of a polyester blend. So I'm going to show you what to do when you iron it on, okay? okay? So first of all, you want to iron the fusible web to the back of all your fabrics. Take your little pattern and just trace it on. And if you look over here, you can see all the different kind of combinations you can do. There's you know, different combinations. So cut out maybe two or three of each one of the different colors, and that way all your little dragonflies will look different. So trace on your patterns, and it's easier to trace them all first and then cut them out. So you just want to cut it out. And you're using what fabric, just plain cotton? Right. Mm -hmm. but, well, you know, and I'm a fabricaholic, so this was a good way to use up all my extra, extra scraps. Little, little pieces. You know, and if you make... Um, tablecloths to match this, and napkins, and um, placemats, and all sorts of stuff, you'll use up even more fabric. <laughs> now that's a good idea, just carry this theme mm -hmm. throughout the mm -hmm. whole picnic. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to use some grass, so I just want to cut some little grasses here, just to make them look so that, you know, it looks like they're out in the yard. But you know, we get so many bugs in the valley, so these things are great to have. And you could cover up your fabric without any, uh, your food <laughs> without any problem. Okay, now I'm going to iron this on. Now I need to show you what we're going to do over here. You want to take your guy and open it up, your little cover, and put it over the edge of the ironing board, okay? And so this is the only way you can iron it on there. Okay. You're going to need some tracing paper, okay? okay? And I've got all my little parts here. Now all you need to do is peel off the paper backing, and you just want to position where they go here. And if you bend back the fabric, I mean, the paper backing, you've got kind of a handle to hold, and it just peels right off. Kind of by bending the fabric, kind of yeah. loosens it there. Let's see what we've got cooking here, and we'll see what they look like. I just love these fabrics. They're so pretty. Okay, now I've got my guy positioned. 
Oh, well, it's got funky wings, but that's okay. Okay, now you need to put tracing paper or typing paper or something over the top. This is like a polyester uh, blend of fabric and you don't want it too hot on iron. Okay. So you want to cover that up real well and then just kind of iron it on there. And you want to iron your grass on too at the same time. So okay. there he is. And I'm going to tattle on you. I know. <laughs> you expected That's okay. that? Go ahead. Uh, uh, you know, you were saying be sure that your iron is not too hot because it's kind of a, right. a plastic type of mm -hmm. material. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't wonder if you've got your uh, iron set on right now. It's pretty low. It's like number three. Okay. Not very hot. Now, let's take a look at what you did oh, <laughs> earlier Aline. in the game. <laughs> Yay. And show you, this is what you don't want to happen. See what See? happens. Uh -huh. See, you know, we make mistakes every now and again, and we learn, and that's what you have to be really, right. really careful for. But that shows you what, so what you can do when you do, do it. Do as I say, don't do as I do, <laughs> right? Okay, yeah. so now we've got all our guys on here, all our little parts. And again, you could change... Um, any color scheme you want there. Now, I'm using a jelly roll pen. These are just the colored pens that the kids are using right now. And this is what I'm using for the um, antenna and stuff. I thought, well, this could be kind of interesting. So you just want to press that on there. And these are kind of the antennas. And what what advantage does this pen have? I'm not really familiar with Well, it's with a this. bright color. Okay. It's different it's your, than, it's sometimes color. felt pens will ble uh, bleed. You uh -huh. know, it will spread on the, the fabric. So, oops, this one <laughs> won't. <laughs> so you're just going to use that for the antenna, or you can use dimensional paint or acrylic paint or whatever you want to do. So basically, you'll just do it on all four sides, and you're ready to go. And this exact same procedure would be great, whether it was on your tablecloth, oh, like you definitely. mentioned, on, on uh, your placemats. Uh -huh. You could carry this whole theme. Isn't it cute? You know, you can even put stick and hold on the back of this and put it on glasses or anything else. You have a wonderful idea. And let's not forget that there is a kit, special kit, uh, with the Aline's fusible mm -hmm. web. Good and deal. so, when it, when you, like you say, with the fusible web, you can put it onto any surface. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're not just uh, caught to put it on You can go on, on wood, anything, too. Right. So. I want to thank you for sharing another great idea. And, of course, I'm looking forward <laughs> to this picnic time well, now, good. too. It's going to be a fun day here at Aline's. <laughs> no, it's not. This is going to be miserable. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cute little guy, Bonnie. Isn't, isn't this cute? Marlene Watson comes up with just the most creative things to do. I, I just, I saw these guys and thought, what a face I could love. Hello. And then we have some over here <laughs> that are bunnies. Check this out. I don't know why. They just strike me. You know how some things, they just, you see them and you love them? <laughs> These guys, I, I, there's something about that big smile, open mm -hmm. face. Now there's something in there, isn't there? Yes. Let's see what's in here. <laughs> of course, oh. jelly beans. Marlene thinks of everything. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> now those are very Eastery, and these guys were very Christmassy, but of course they don't have to be necessarily right. for any of the holidays, or we could make these guys somehow sort of patriotic. That's right. So these are just some ideas, and you can take it and go off with whatever you need. Well, so, believe it or not, they're cans. Yes, look at We're starting off with just uh, vegetable juice cans, and you can do um, orange juice cans, whatever, because each little can might be different. So right. So this is just your basic one. And what you do is take up, well, of course you want to have the kind that has the round opening. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to turn it toward me so that the, the mouth is looking at me. And then about, uh, I'll put it down like this so you can see about, not halfway, but a little bit further up to the top. Mm -hmm. A third of the way down, how's that? And then I'm going to squeeze and sort of pull, pull down as far as I want to, and then it should ah. sit. Okay, and I can squeeze some more, depending Wonderful. on how far over I want it to go. Oh, he's a little off. Uh -oh. His mouth is going to, his head's going to be sort of looking this way, but that that's should be cute. all right. He'll have all more right. personality. Okay, well, actually, we're going to do this one, so that's good. I'll work on him later. All right. So then what you do is take Krylon's suede um, spray, mm -hmm. spray paint, and then that's because it's not shiny. That's why we like that suede, and so it's uh -huh. going to look very good for our for our bear, and I'm using hot glue and pom-poms, and so right where we've got this crease, that's where our hands are going to be, or paws. <laughs> Please let me pause. <laughs> this is adorable. Now, I am putting, as always, there are different ways that you can do it. You notice how I put the glue on the can and then the pom-pom? You can yes. also do the pom-pom, put the glue on the pom-pom, and then put it on the can. It really doesn't matter. Okay because after all, we're just making little bears. <laughs> okay, now comes, now comes their face. And 
I don't know if you have seen this before, but you can actually sometimes in craft stores find these little noses. I had not Isn't seen that, that before something? today. Yes. And of course, if you can't find something like this, another little black pom-pom would do, well, or sure. a black bead or something like that. Mm -hmm. All right, now, okay, I'm gonna go and put the cheeks on first. And All right. for this one, I'm gonna spread apart the fur of the pom-pom so that I can get the glue right down into the center. Spread apart the fur. Dab of glue. You could make a lot of these oh, quickly. Oh, these are fun. Marlene was saying that she put these out on an Easter uh, decoration table uh -huh. for every place setting and then put their names on the little carrots. Isn't that adorable oh, idea? Oh, very cute. Now I better make sure his nose is the right way. Yes. I could just see me putting it on upside down <laughs> so he wouldn't be able to <laughs> sniff correctly. And then Google eyes. So he's coming together. Mm, I think these are just adorable. You know what? I think you've got a really secret weapon later. Should we go to that? No, I'm not going to oh, finish no. his face. That's all right. You just do it however long you want to go with this. <laughs> because bit. this really is the most spectacular thing. It really is. I could not believe when Marlene showed me this. All right, let's go to the hats. Okay. Now, you can, you've probably seen the little felt hats you can buy. Yes. But aren't these wonderful? And let me tell you how she found out how to do this. These are actually styrofoam cups. She put in, she had some tea <laughs> in a styrofoam me. cup and put it in her, she has a combination oven microwave, so she put it in thinking it was in the microwave. Uh -huh. She pushed the oven button and the thing, it, it, it squished down into a perfect hat. <laughs> that blows me away. I love that. Now some so of the people here in the studio had seen this before, but I haven't. I hadn't heard of this either. This and so great. what you want to do is, is make it about an oven of about 200 degrees and only put it in for a minute, okay. like on a cookie sheet, and you never know how they're going to go. Look, this one is a little sailor hat. Oh, my goodness. And just paint it and put it on there. Is I love this I idea. Do too. Oh, we're going to go nuts with this. Then when you paint it, it comes out Look wonderful. Put a little pom pom on it. Isn't that? I know. We're going to be in the kitchen all day with the <laughs> oven with and the styrofoam cups. cups. <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie, this is great. Tell Marlene thanks for me. I will do you? that. All right. It's that time of the week. Sue Thornton Gray is here with us today from Janome, and you've got some great ideas for teenagers. Sure do. Using the MemoryCraft 4800. Yes. Uh, brought three different ensembles today for mm -hmm. Teen World, although I wouldn't mind having them either. And well, I, me too. Yeah, and I'm kind of out of that teenage years. <laughs> but the complete instructions for all three of these outfits, including the shirt, and the pants are available in Genome Digest. Okay. So, uh, you know, in case you were wondering where the instructions might be, mm -hmm. that is where you can find them. Uh, the one that we have on the table next to the digest is uh, featuring elongation and some of the pattern manipulation, and we're going to get into that next week. Okay. We'll tell you about the elongation on it. And then the blue one is the one that we're going to cover today, and I just think that these are just so cute. Me too. I have to give credit where credit is due. A gal by the name of Regina Jansen, and actually she is a Genome employee, uh, a good friend of mine. It seems like they're all good friends of mine. Well, sure. <laughs> and thinks is the creator of these uh, garments, and I just think they are just so cute. I would Absolute, wear these. Yeah, I would. And she kind of fits into that teenage category, mm -hmm. so it's right up her alley. Uh, today we're going to be featuring, like I said, the blue outfit and an accessory called the ribbon and sequin foot. And that's what we have right here on the table because one part of this little blue jean outfit is sewing over ribbon. And you know, sometimes you have difficulty sewing over ribbon when it doesn't stay straight. You know, it wants right. to feed, you know, to the right or to the left. So the ribbon and sequin foot give you the ability to sew that on there nice and straight. Another hint from Regina is, you know, the MemoryCraft 4800 is a free arm. Mm -hmm. So if we think about blue jean legs, we can think about them, you know, just wrapping around the free arm. Perfect. But some of them, you know, are small, or maybe you, you're using the same technique on a smaller size. Mm -hmm. Normally, the seam that is one of the seams that can be on the outside of the pants or the inside of the pants are very easy to rip out 
Oh, well, yeah. And so then you can just go ahead and, st you know, sew them back up when you're done. Uh -huh. Normally on blue jeans, it's only one side right. that is the flat felt side, not right. both. And at first I thought, well, this is, this is great. It's always on the outside. But then you'll buy another brand and it will prove me wrong. Mm -hmm. So, but I have not seen... Uh, I shouldn't say that. I have, but very rarely do you see the flat felt on both sides. Uh -huh, you're right. So um, perfect hint. Right. Then you can come over to uh, the Memory Craft 4800, and I already have the ribbon and sequin foot snapped onto the machine. Okay. And there is a little hole that is in the front of this, and I'm simply going to guide that through the hole, oh, just how like nice. that. And this is adjustable. So depending upon what kind of stitch you have selected, you may want to move that ribbon over to the right or to the left. Okay. But I know that it's fine for right where it is where I want it to be. Next, I'm going to pick a decorative stitch. And we have lots oh to my. choose from. How to choose. Lots and lots. Regina likes stitch number 88, which reminds me kind of an Egyptian Ooh. theme. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one. Okay. Right now I'm, a, I'm in my direct mode. So I'm simply going to press mode once. And now I go from 0, 1 to 99. Now I can go over to my touchpad and simply select stitch number 88. Ooh, simple. And it's going to tell me recommended tension, recommended foot, but I'm doing a different application, so I won't be using my fun foot. And then the stitch width and the stitch length. Okay. So now all you need to do is to place your fabric underneath. I'm using a light piece of denim. So I do have a stabilizer underneath. Okay. I doubt if you need much of a stabilizer at all when you're working on denim blue jeans. Right. So now all we do is just sew. And as you notice, I don't have to guide the ribbon. I don't have to hold on to it. The foot is doing all the work for me. And let's give her some gas. And it stitches that ribbon right in place perfectly. Beautiful, Sue. Yeah. Now, I didn't know about this attachment. This is a real surprise for me. That is a wonderful Doesn't thing. Doesn't it look great? Yes. Uh, also great for sequins. So if you want to make yourself a fancy sequin pair of blue jeans, you can <laughs> using the ribbon and sequin. Well, oh, I'll keep that in uh, mind. <laughs> sounds good. Well, thanks for being here today. You're welcome. See, See you next, next week. week. Use plastic hangers to help organize your fabric scraps. Selection is much easier when your materials are clearly displayed. When not in use, simply hang them up and out of the way. A special announcement to our viewers. After Friday, June 30th, The Lynn's Creative Living will no longer be aired on TNN. You can help us in our efforts to have our show aired in your area by writing a letter to your local cable company or network affiliate and asking them to pick up A Lynn's Creative Living. Write your own letter or check our website, www.alines.com, within the coming days for a pre-written letter that you can print out, sign, and send. All of us at Aline's Creative Living thank you for your support of our show over the years. Because of you, we were able to reach thousands of crafters and help them change their lives through creativity. Well, we have Jolly Uncle Sam with us today, and I tell you what, if he doesn't get you in the mood for 4th of July, nothing will. I mean, isn't he darling? Look at him with his little flag and his USA. I mean, he's just perfect for the 4th of July. He's a lot of fun to make also. Oh, I'm sure. So today with us, we have Melody Good from Hancock Fabrics, okay. and you were going to tell us exactly how to make him. This particular project takes a few things. We do a little bit of sewing, a little bit of gluing, and a little bit of fusing. A little bit of everything. Right, right. So multi-talents. Okay. Here. To start off with, we've taken a large circle of the fabric, and mm -hmm. you can make it out of anything you'd like. We've used a 4th of July looking print with some firecracker looks, but you turn down a quarter of an inch to the inside, mm -hmm. then you take a hand needle and you baste that around. All you, the way around. Right. And then you pull your threads. And I recommend a heavy thread, like a quilting thread, something that's not going to break on you when you start to pull this up. Right. Start to pull it up a little bit. Then you need to take a product called poly pellets and put into the base. And that's what gives it the weight on mm -hmm. that. So they're just little polyester pellets that go on the bottom. Then you would fill up the rest of it with fiber fill to make so it nice and soft. So you mix both of them. Right. The pellets go on the bottom for the weight, and then okay. you add the fiber fill inside. To make it soft. Right. So then you pull it up and you hand stitch the top mm -hmm. of the bag closed. Mm -hmm. Next, you got your little bean bag. Yes. Perfect. Next you want to do is you want to create the arms and the legs. Okay. Now to do that, we've cut a two inch wide strip of fabric, and you need to fold the rye edges in. To make that a little bit easier, we have a product which is called a bias tape maker, mm -hmm. even though we've not cut this on the bias. 
but you feed it through the metal piece, it folds under the edges, so you don't have to worry about getting your fingers burnt when you're turning under these edges. And that is such a great little uh, tool. And it goes very, very quickly. So that folds your raw edges under. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to create a one inch strip of the Aline's Hot Stitch Feasible Web, mm -hmm. you cut the lengths that you need. You would place that over top of those raw edges and fuse that in place. Great. Once you Perfect. have that completed, you then, with the instructions, cut the length that you need. You want to take it and fold it in half and press it, but leave the paper there for now. Okay, so you don't peel off the back. Do not peel off the pack back okay. yet. You want to fold that so it's folded in half. Mm -hmm. Let that cool a little bit, then you remove the paper backing, and now you want to press it together. But this way you get an even crease to it. You don't have to worry about it. So that's why you don't remove the paper at first. Right. That makes sense. And that's that gives, great. That gives you a nice, you don't have to worry about burning your fingers and you've got your pieces. Now you're so going to have, we have our legs and our arms. Right. Okay. Okay. For the legs, you want to take and you cut the length in the instructions. You put a knot in each one of the ends, mm -hmm. kind of fold it in half, and then you want to hot glue that to the base. And there you've got your legs with your little feet on the bottom. How cute. Then the top piece, you can uh -huh. again hot glue that across the top and glue that in place for okay. the little arms. Perfect. For the head, we've taken a piece of muslin. And you want to sew this either by hand or by sewing machine. And this the pattern piece for that is found. Turn it right side out. Mm -hmm. Stuff that with, again, some polyester fiber fell. Hand stitch the bottom of that closed. And you draw the facial features in place. Now, what sort of material? This looks almost um, like a linen. Well, it's kind of a muslin. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Like because it has a bit of a texture to it. It's mm -hmm. a nice uh, skin look. That's so then nice we've taken look. the head. We've drawn the facial features on. Mm -hmm. Then we've used the little wool glued that on for the mustache and the head, and then that is glued on top of the arms. So you just hot glue this and he stays then? Mm hmm Okay, great. When you're working with the hat, we want to take a piece of the striped fabric, piece of fleece or felt, paperback feasible web, fuse mm -hmm. that in place. Then you take and cut out the pieces that will be the hat. You have a rectangle and an oval. Okay. That's I just want to clarify really quickly so mm -hmm. that I don't do this wrong later. I've got the material and then piece of felt, the felt and then the, the fusible, uh, web. fusible web right, right on top of that. So Great. You pull the web off, you fuse those two pieces together. Okay. Okay, so you have those, you cut those pieces out, form the rectangle into the top of the hat and Great. hot glue that together. Perfect. And then you have his hat and you can glue that on the top of his head. And there he is. And then the little flags we have, we've used a pre-printed fabric that has a flag look to it, made it mm -hmm. very easy. Put a piece of web across there, remove the web, fold that in half, and you can put the pipe cleaner inside and fuse that for the little flags. He is just darling. And I see you are so ready for the 4th of <laughs> July, so you'll be carrying around your little Uncle Sam's and just looking perfect. My favorite month. Now tell us about your stores. Our Hancock Fabrics, we're mm -hmm. located in 450 locations in 43 states. You are everywhere. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us today, Melody. Thank you, Cornelia. Mm -hmm. When Aline's Creative Living returns, we'll chat about some cool tools that Maria's found. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Aline's Creative Living, the best resource for crafters everywhere. We have another fun-filled half hour to go, so stay with us. We're going to add some really fun accents to candles and glass jars, plus we'll create fun and funky gift wrapping ideas. And we'll have beautiful plant stakes using wire. But first, we're going to get the scoop on some cool tools from Maria Narius, who was here recently to chat with Linda. Maria is here with us today, and she's here to show us some great ideas on making our crafting easier. Hi, Maria. Hi. I am a tool fanatic. I love collecting them, and I love using them. And I found some wonderful ones to share with the viewers today. The first is probably for rubber stampers, but almost any crafter will love this. And it's a way to take a stamped image and create a 3D image. And what it's done is with a series of stamps, you'll stamp them, you mm -hmm. can emboss them if you like, cut them out, and then it's all assembled. And if you don't feel like stamping, taking the time to do that, the company called Some Assembly Required <laughs> even has cutouts. So you just simply punch them out and you can create an ornament or um, even a really cool fold out for a card. Wow, that sounds like up. fun. Okay. The next tool is called Cool Fingers. Mm -hmm. And for anybody that's ever embossed or used a heating tool right. and has burned their little fingertips, this will really come in handy. You can then place it down, allow it to cool, and simply slip the card out. It's a great tool, especially for the rubber stampers. 
Okay, this one, are you ready for this yes, one? Yes, I am. Kay. This is from EK Success, and they do come up with some of the coolest tools. And this is a circle oh. cutter. And what you've done here is you have over 120 different sizes of circles that you can cut out. And that's wonderful for just about any yeah. paper craft. Another item that they have is the circle ruler, and it's done with much the same format. You'll take your pin, put it into the hole, circle around, and you can make all different kinds of sizes of circles. That is so neat, because when so you, you go to do it yourself, there. it's always never going to be perfect. <laughs> and I did want to share a secret. I absolutely love these markers. I originally found them in Belgium, of oh. all places. And I didn't really talk about them, because that's kind of teasing to tell people of a product <laughs> that's wonderful, and then not be able to have right. them be able to find it. And then I discovered, when I read the packaging, they're made by an American company, Avery. So they really are nice, because they have a very, very thin tip. Mm -hmm. And so you can get into little holes like this circle ruler and be able to have a beautiful image. They also blend wonderfully. And the neat thing that I found out every once in a while, I know they tell you you got to put the cap on here, it snaps so it doesn't dry mm -hmm. out. But I've actually left these for several hours and they stayed moist and the color is really pure and true. So it's kind of nice to add that, especially into your paper craft. Yeah, that's amazing. They Isn't actually it fun? stay like that. I'll get you addicted to tools oh, yet. You will. Well, I love tools. Good deal. Well, thanks, Maria. Coming up next, decorate gifts with easy accents. Stay tuned. If you're a little bit like me, you're always looking for a unique way that you can personalize some purchase gifts. And I had some beautiful bottles that I wanted to make them just a little more personalized as I put some flowers from my garden, I'm so proud of that, into the bottles to make some nice, unique little vases. And I, I love candles. Some of these candles are homemade, but some of them are purchased. They have such an incredible aroma and it adds so much to a room. So I love to give candles as gifts. And even if it's a purchased candle like this one, by adding some decorative box prints and some lace and ribbons, I can really create something that just adds even more to the mood of the day. Now these projects are so simple and they're a lot of fun. So this is a thing you might want to do with some girlfriends over a lunch and have just a nice little afternoon. You can add pearls, beads, whatever you want to just make it a truly unique idea. Well, let me show you how I got started. I was playing with the Aline's Box prints and they're just so many fun styles and so I had a lot of fun with this. Then I'm using all my scrapbooking tools in, in every way that I can. Here is a nice bright orange print. I simply took this ruler and I really like the, the choices that I have for the borders on either side. So then I drew myself a little guideline. Now I can simply cut it out if I want a really wide wavy border. I also discovered that my decorative scissors work great for projects like this also if I want a smaller decorative border. Well, the next step is really to match the box print to the candle, and I think this is going to look good on this natural candle. So, I'm going to use my crimper because it just adds a little texture. Now, if you haven't used a crimper before, it's very simple. You place your box print into the crimper, you clamp it down, and then you turn the handle away from you, and it just gives you some really nice texture. Now I'm ready to wrap this around my candle. This would be nice on a taller candle because I wouldn't want to keep this on very long while I was burning it. And I'll just tie it with a ribbon. And in just a few moments you can see that I have a very nice little gift. Now very often I'll take some mint or, or lavender or something from my garden and just tie a few little pieces on to just add a little more to the aromatherapy effect. Okay, so I'm going to set this off to the side, and that's a wonderful beeswax candle. Well, you can also combine your box prints to come up with kind of a unique look. This is one that I had left over, and I simply used my decorative scissors. And remember, the trick to these is to just line up the design as you go. Okay, now I'm going to place my floral paper through the crimper. Now you don't have to add this step. It just adds kind of a nice touch because texture is just really fun and exciting these days. This is also just a great way to kind of spruce up a room in your house. 
without spending a lot of money, you can just add kind of a nice touch. I'm going to go ahead and glue this down because I want it to be centered nicely. And I love the words on this paper. I think that's very nice. So now I have this glass bottle. I'm simply going to wrap this around like this. And if, it, if, you, if you have a wider bottle, you can actually piece the box prints together. But I think I'm going to cheat just a little bit and put a little bit of glue on either side to help hold it. And then I'll use a really nice big piece of ribbon. How about this? This is some really fun wired silk. It's actually fabric that I tear and tore into strips, but it's very sheer, so it adds a nice touch. Now, another fun thing that I, that I have done is th these box prints do coincide with some of the Aline's um, memory papers, and there's some shrinket. And there's a shrinket that actually matches this wonderful rose design really nicely. So you can use that, shrink it down, and use it as a little accent as I've done over here on this one. Or with shrink it, I find sometimes it's nice to just use the whole piece without even having shrunk it. So now I'm just going to add some flowers from my garden. And I have a nice little gift that I can leave at someone's doorstep. I hope you enjoyed this idea. Coming up next, we have a unique way to wrap gifts. Stay tuned. Sometimes you just really need to razzle-dazzle somebody and really give them an awesome gift at the same time. This puts it all together. And Susan Sher is here with me from Pump a Present. Susan, these are so cool and for dads and everybody. That's right, Patty. We've got a, a array of balloons here on display today. Here we're showing um, a gardening balloon. How do you give you know some unusual things and make them look even better by putting them inside of a balloon? Things you might not have thought of putting inside of a balloon look no great kidding. inside. Now, I can't imagine putting trowels and things like that inside a balloon and you even have a Barbie over here. That's right. You know Barbie looks great in a box and she's pretty by herself but you know you put her inside of a balloon what little girl doesn't fall in love with her. Oh. And of course you can use all your crafting items to decorate the balloons as well that you have at home. Oh sure. Now look at these. Well those are a couple of my favorites. Of course we have a spa balloon and we have stickers on them as well as there's a ladybug hat and stuffed animal. And of course you can get creative with all your bows and mm -hmm. leftover ribbons and things like that at home. Well, you can't help but be happy and smile when you see this kind of a project. That's right. You know, you have a lot of fun. When was the last time you had fun wrapping a gift? And really? this with Pump a Present, it does let you do that. Well, there might be somebody out there that has not seen you do this. All righty. So let's we'll show them how it's demonstrate done. And show them how easy it is to do. Well, the set is a set of three tubes and consists of our mega tube, and this is our favorite tube, and we're going to put that down inside the mega tube, and it has a four and a half inch diameter opening, and anything you can fit inside of here, you'll get inside of a balloon. Okay. Now we put a nice edge here on the tube so when you're standing you can just lean up again so it's not going to be flying all over the place. And the next biggest secret of course with the blue oh gift goodness. wrapping is attaching fishing line. <laughs> and we just simply, if you can sew a little bit, you can just put a tie a knot in and put it on side your and your item. Oh, now we're going to put our head item in first. head first. And you can see it's a pretty good size. <laughs> and we're just going to kind of push them in. Oh and this it goes is hilarious. In, and there goes his feet. His feet are going to be last. And again, the secret here is just leave that fish line hang right over the edge. Uh -huh. Now you can do things like confetti or whatever you want to have lay Ooh, in the bottom of the balloon would, would go in fun. last. Now there are special wide neck balloons, Patty, that come in with the kit. There are six of them. Uh -huh. And these balloons are not available in any store because our product is not available in any store. So this is a great place to buy it. And then you simply stretch your balloon right across the edge. Oh my. And then when you run out of the balloons in the kit, of course, go to open stock because we have lots of extras. Okay. Here's the fish line hanging over the edge and we're just going to use then our third tube, which is the pumper tube, and start pumping. Now it's really easy. I love to tell you you're going to lose lots of cat burn up calories doing this. Um, I'm sure you'd all buy one if, I, if you knew that. But it's that easy, and kids from 9 to 99, Patty, can use this. It's so simple. Kids love doing it, as well as adults, because this isn't just for mm -hmm. kids' gifts. This is adult gifts as well. Now the balloon inflates to a 17-inch diameter, and then we just remove our pumper tube. Okay. Give our tube a twist, and I, you can use your leg, you can use the table, and you're going to push. Oh, and there pop, it is. And then it pops. Then you're going to let your item fall down to the bottom, and then again we're just going to grasp the neck of the balloon. Get our fish line out of the way. How fun this is! Give it a twist, a couple of revolutions. Uh -huh. There's a tab here on the tube. We just flip our balloon off that way. Okay. And of course our little bear with his swimming ring would be laying on the bottom, but we pull <laughs> up on that fish line and he's all set and ready to go. Uh, now we've amazing. got our 
tying disc that we use for tying off the balloons, which makes it much easier for those of you with long fingernails that don't like tying knots. Uh -huh. And it's that simple. You know, uh -huh. and these are strong and durable and tough balloons. We can, you can use a variety of bases, mm -hmm. and I don't want to block you. And then, of course, decorate with your bows, your curling ribbon, sure. add some stickers, glitter. Just get real creative <laughs> and have a lot of fun wrapping those gifts. Oh, who wouldn't love receiving a gift like this? Well, you know, adults and kids as well. There's just, the more things you find, the more creative you get. And now I'm going to show you how easy it is to do with our favorite tube. Okay. Simply, you just put our favorite tube down inside, and things like gumballs, candies, wrapped candies, little uh, almonds for weddings, and simply these balloons, or 10 of them are in with the kit, and we're just going to stretch that over the top. Okay. And start pumping. No more blowing up balloons by, oh. by mouth. And then tip the tube, and you are finished tying it off. And then we're going to um, tie it in a knot. No special uh, discs for tying this one okay. off. Okay. And then... I bet kids love you. Oh, kids love it. You know, it's great for Halloween. I'll just think of all the great uh, gifts that you're going to give, and maybe kids come into the door, and you're going to have those there for them. How fun. If you're looking to add a contemporary and creative new look to your home or your plants, you're going to want to take a look at what Joan has come up with. Very clever, Joan. Thank you, Catherine. Since it's summertime and the plants are in bloom, this is a wonderful project to add just a little bit of modern look or just... Actually, for the orchid here, he was pretty much drooping, so this is how I came up with this idea. little plant poke there to keep him nice and upright so we can see the beauty of the orchid. A very supportive craft for this orchid. <laughs> but it is very unique, and plant sticks have been a staple at craft sales and bazaars and boutiques for so long. Right. Using this wire gives you a lot of versatility mm -hmm. to create the other things as well, like this wall sconce. Right, and the wire comes in such beautiful colors and different gauges, um, and it is just a hot product right now. I really like that. That looks really Thank good. You. So what are some of the secrets to working with wire? Well, you have to have good crafting tools, first of all. That makes the project quick and easy and a lot of fun to do. So I am taking the wire, and like I said, it comes in beautiful, beautiful colors. And I'm taking, these are four and a half inch diagonal pliers, makes it quick and easy to cut your wire there. And then there are so many different pliers and things that you can use. These are great, they're kind of rounded so that it's great for twisting and turning. And that's what I'm going to use to make my first little twist there. And then you can come in and you can just continue twisting with that and you can give it dimension if you want. I'm giving dimension to it right there. And you just can play with it. And with just a few little twists of your wrist here, you can make great plant pokes. I noticed that, that these tools don't have any little grid right. edges on them, can, so it's not marring your wire. Right. Especially these are, I think, called flat nose pliers. <laughs> so meaning that it's flat and then there's no um, serrated edge in there like you're talking about. So that doesn't make marks here on my beautiful wire project. Very nice. Do you happen to know what gauge this wire is? That I don't, but you know what? Let me show you this. This is 10 gauge. That's a very dense, heavy wire. And so then the numbers go up depending on the thinner it gets. Okay, so thinner wire has a higher, higher number. Right. Heavier wire has a lower number. So here is the 10 gauge. Let me show you. I was talking about it being pretty stiff. You just have to work with it a little bit harder, but it makes a beautiful look. And then, too, if you want to add some beads, make sure that your bead is the same uh, circumference, diameter, the hole is the same. <laughs> the hole is the same size. That's going to fit on your, the wire. Right, thank you very much. And so then you can just add some beads. You can um, pick up beautiful beads in different stores. And I know there's like African beads and beads for different styles. So you can make this same more contemporary look than a modern look. Now I'm noticing that this is a copper colored wire. Mm -hmm. Is this wire copper and silver colored? Or do, I guess my, my real question is, does the copper wire bend more easily than some of these other wires? Well, these, I believe, if we can, that's a, kind of a bad cut there. These are copper, the center's copper, and then okay. they colored it. Great. So this just happens to be that 10 gauge. It's very, very sturdy, mm -hmm. very stiff. So I'm using this smaller gauge, and to me it's just a little bit easier to handle. And I just can't stop playing with this wire using the tools. I made cute little twisty things. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. But I thought, oh, you know, I could add some um, fish 
hook earrings and things and make great earrings or make a really pretty pin. Now, when you create the spirals like this, mm -hmm. do you start out in this method and then flatten it or do you just do it flat the I whole time? I go flat the whole time. Again, starting with the little, the little, I always start with the little hook there in the center. Okay, I love to see this. Right, and then you just continue on going around and around. And this is one of those things you can just sit there for hours and hours and <laughs> hours and go along. And if it is, see in the middle, I got a little bit not quite flat there. I can just go in with my flat nose plier there and flatten that out. Or like you're saying, if you don't like that, then you can just kind of tug at a little bit and play with it a little bit more. Looking for a way to remove those black scuff marks from your favorite shoes? Try nail polish remover. Just rub it in and wipe away. Your shoes will be looking good in no time. Catherine, it is watch and win time. Yes, it is, but before we talk about today's winner, we have a brand new watch and win box front cover gracing our box. Isn't that great? Of course, we ask everybody to join in. And what do they get when they when their idea is chosen? Well, it's, it's always different, but it's some sort of really groovy grab bag that we put together for you. Okay, now this idea comes from Lori, Blake, Mason, and Alexandra Farber from Britain, South Dakota. And it says, Dear ACL, Williams Creative Living, that's us. <laughs> Thanks for putting a great show on TV. My three children and I have tried many of your projects. The boys ages seven to nine love Shrink It, and even my two-year-old likes to help. We all work together on your Watch and Win box cover. Oh. Keep providing us with fun. Kids' projects in the future we will be watching. Thanks again. And remember, that's Lori, Blake, Mason, and Alexandra Farber. So this was really a family project with all the, the sponging on there and the little buttons glued on. What a, what a treat. Right, and be sure and send your ideas in because if it's used, you are going to get something special. That's true. <laughs> Goodie now, bag. Now, let's try it out. What's the prize for today's winner? Well, in our beautifully decorated box, we will draw a prize winner today, and they're going to receive the Curved Box Maker Get Acquainted Kit. It's valued at $15.00. Ninety-nine cents, and who <laughs> the winner is? Isn't that fun? I get to. That's the fun. I get to pull whoever <laughs> gets is the winner. Christina Cruz from Chicago, Illinois, and it says thank you. Congratulations, Christina. Call us up anytime at one eight hundred eight two five three three six three to claim your prize. Look at isn't that a cute little card that she sent oh. it on? We get so many cute cards and cute sayings and we wonderful do. letters on this. It's a joy for us to present this part of our show. And a lot, a lot of animal cards, a lot of cute kittens and puppies. And now what's going to happen tomorrow? Oh, I can't wait. Bonnie is going to be here, and she's going to create some pressed paper designs that you can use to decorate wedding gifts. And we'll make adorable beanie bag creations. We'll also whip up some outdoor decor from the flea market. And for now, bye. Bye bye. <laughs>